Hi, this is Cheryl of Majestic Wire Artworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this round coil treasure trove necklace. Um, I'm not going to focus on what beads I've used because this can be used for multiple choices of beads. Like this one I've made quite elegantly with uh, a beautiful cultured pearl and, uh, and crystals. Uh, but the one I'm going to make today is going to be jam-packed full of glass crystals. So you can have a wide variety of um, either gemstones or glass or whichever you, whatever you'd want to put on it. So, and let's begin. So what I've done is um, you need to decide how big you want your ring to be. So it can be as big as you want it or as small as you want it. The smaller it is, the stronger it is. But I recommend having a little bit of space because that's what draws drama to this necklace is the fact that it's got that ring there. It just, it's, it's, it has a classy look. And um, I've put on a very long chain on here. I think it's like 27 inches. So I don't even need a clasp. I can just slide it over my head. And uh, so, that's one option I wanted to talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a ring on my ring mandrel. You don't need a ring mandrel. Um, it makes things easier, but you could use a large jiffy marker or, you know, depending on how big you want your ring. Let's see, do I want it that big? Let's compare it to the one I had. So it's a little bit bigger, but that's fine because I'm going to be putting more stones on it. So that's about how big I want my circle to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip it like this. And then this tells me how much coiling I need to do to make that circle. But because we need room to make our spiral at the edge of it, I want to make it about, um, well, about two millimeters shorter. Just like that, just to give that space, okay? And then, um, so if you were doing, like this is an adjustable size, so I can work with it and slide it bigger or smaller as needed, you would want to, um, do that ring around your jiffy marker, whatever you're using, and do that little bit of a snip and uh, just double check that it leaves a space about, about that big around, excuse me, around the marker, whatever it is you're using. And then now, so this is your measurement for doing your coiling. So I'm going to flatten this wire. We're not using it as part of the necklace. This is just a measuring guide. Okay, you just want it straight. Okay, now I have your supply list in the description below as per normal. And uh, so you're gonna take 20 gauge wire, about 10 inches longer if you're doing a much bigger circle. Um, you probably need a little bit longer, but uh, I think that 10 to 12 inches is a good length to do this. Okay, and now I want you to take your 28 gauge piece of wire, and that's what you're gonna do your coiling with. And uh, so we're gonna go to towards the edge, end, and we're gonna start coiling. And you want to have your piece, your measurement piece handy because we want to measure, we want to coil that length. And if you're doing a specific uh, length, like a jiffy marker, oh, it went out of focus. There we go. And uh, then you want to be pretty exact, whereas a uh, ring mandrel is more forgiving if you go make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, so you just adjust the size a, a little bit. Okay, so the coiling technique and again, it's going out of focus. 
quilling technique is, you know, you make your tail and you wrap around, just like when you anchor something, but you're gonna wrap around not too far and not over each other's wires like that and about every 10 wraps then you compress and I compress from one end and the other end and it just makes for a neater wrap and you don't when you're coiling you don't want to do a big space like that because that's when you get uneven coils you want to go as close as you can you can go a little bit far away like like that and it won't matter it, co it coils up nicely so I'm going to go ahead and pause this and make my coil the length I need and you can go ahead and work on yours as well okay so I'm back and I've actually um actually did a smidge more than my measurement so what I'm going to do is at the beginning usually it ends up being a tiny bit messy I'm gonna just un ravel you need to hang on to the um, coil quite tightly and pull stiffly to unravel a little bit to make it the right size okay and now I'm gonna measure it again And now I unravel too much. Silly. And I only have a little bit left. So I use two feet of wire. You might want to cut off. I'm going to put in the measurements um, two and a quarter feet. Okay, let's see if that's better. Okay, it's pretty it's pretty close with a jiffy marker you'd want to be a little actually you know that's close enough because the spiral in the center actually hides a fair bit so now I am going to snip off the ends and crimp them in When I do this, I usually give a twist. Okay, and then the other side, same thing. And you go the direction that the coil's going. Sometimes you have to tap it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and slide it into the center of the wire. So that's pretty close. Okay, and I am going to now attempt to wrap it around um, the ring mandrel. And I got to make sure I'm in camera view. It's a difficult, this will be difficult for me because I normally have the ring mandrel resting up against me. So it's oh, it's okay to start on a ring mandrel smaller than what you need and then just um, slide it up the sizes, but it usually un goes a little bit bigger anyways. So I'm gonna, I'm just rolling it along like that, okay. And your Jiffy marker would have been automatically your size. So in some ways that's easier. Okay, but I'm, I'm about happy with that because it's got a tiny bit of space. It just needs a little bit of space for us to wrap it around. And now I'm going to lay it down here. I'm hold, I'm, I've got tight, I've got the wire taut to do this. And I'm going to, it's like making a ring for your finger. Okay. And now I'm just going to continue and make the coil tightly one wire at a time. Now you can make this smaller or bigger. 
what your preference is. As long as we have the wires covered where it's bare and coil is coming up through the sides, we're good. I like them a little bit bigger. And that's just my own preference. Now I find the wire is sliding under it a little bit. I'm going to push this down with my pliers. I'm working through the camera, so I'm not seeing it as clear as I'd like to. Okay, it keeps going underneath for me, and I don't want it to do that. I'm going to push it back up. Well, hopefully that was in the camera. So I'm trying to make it so that the wire hugs around the outside instead of going underneath. Man, it went blurry, didn't it? Okay, so here I'm going to show. I'm trying not to make it go underneath. I want it to go on the side of it. It tends to go underneath. And I think that might be big enough. I could go one more time. Let's go one more time. It's a little bit finicky. Okay. Putting my finger over top and just to hold it steady or my thumb I should say oh I'm sorry I went out of the camera there because I peeked over the camera so I could see better okay so the next step is we want to make this as round as possible so this is where the ring mandrel is the best and i'm going to take my raw hide mallet which you could do a nylon mallet and i want to tap it i'm just doing this to work hard in it we don't want to mar it so i'm not hitting hard just light taps will help. Okay, see, so it's nice and round. It didn't mar. So it's actually looking very, very good at this point. Okay, the next step is we're going to carefully wrap around two or three wraps along the side like you would with a ring. So in a lot of ways, this is like a ring. And this wire is too long. So I'm going to cut it about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half long from, from the coiling. So about there, I'm just guesstimating. It's just to make it easier to wrap around through the ring. And the same with the, the other one. Just guesstimating the length. Okay. So now I'm going to hold this um, spiral and you can see it's not perfectly level but that's okay it adds character and I'm holding it while I bend it because I don't want to deform 
the spiral. Okay, so like that. And this will tend to want to bend. So you got to be careful by holding it in place. And now I'm going to bend this round like this so I can get it through. And again, I'm going to hold this in place, take my pliers. and gently pull that bend so as to not deform your spiral. Okay, and we're gonna carefully pull it up for the next wrap, pushing this down because it's bending up. So you're just gonna go slow and easy and get two or three wraps. Take your time. Holding this down, tugging that tight, but not too tight as we're deforming this. See how it's going to move. It does. I'm going to gently. Now, this is where nylon pliers are good. You could um, try not to mar that. Nylon pliers is a good time to use it. Okay. And I'm going to do one more time. And I don't need the pliers to do that one last time because it's short enough. Okay, bring this down a little bit gently. Okay, now I want to snip the wire off so that the end goes right in the center of the circle. Oh, that flew on me and crimp it down. And I'm going to squeeze these wires together here. Can't do it from the top really without marring. So we want to be careful. And I'm going to push this wire down with my nail. There. Okay. I'm happy with that. And now we're going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pause the video while I do it so that you don't have to watch me do it a second time. And I uh, just wanted to make show you that it's not, these two aren't level. And that's okay, but we're still going to wrap it. So go ahead and do exactly on this side, what we did on this side. If you need to back up to do that, go ahead and I'll see you in a bit. Okay. I'm back with that done. And I'm pushing down the outer edges again. Okay. I'm going to slide that in a bit. Now, I have deformed the ring. And um, I didn't do that with my last one. But that's where a ring mandrel is really nice. Um, you just have to do the best you can do if you've used a pen. A ring sizer um, would work too. Okay, so I'm just holding it as taut as can be. I'm pushing it, I mean, because it's going to be different than it was before. Okay, and I see that my, my flowerette changed up a little bit from that. I'm just going to Put it on here and I'm going to tap it with this because I know it won't mar it. Just gently. Okay. And see it's round again. And I'm going to put it back on and I'm going to um, tap it with the mallet again. You could never do too much, seriously. Because once you get to that certain stage, you won't be able to do this again. So you got to do it now. Okay. Is it round enough? It looks a little square there. So I'm going to fix that again. Pushing putting tension on it, Let's see if that helped, ok, 
Okay, that didn't help. So next thing I'm going to try is with my pliers. Just bend it ever so gently. Yeah, don't want to really do that because look what it did. Okay, of course, being on cameras when it, I've never had this issue happen before. So good thing it happens on camera. And I'm just going to push, 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 push. See if that fixed it. Twist it, twist it. There we go, the twisting worked. Okay, it's too bad the coiling came apart on me. I'm gonna try pushing it together. And of course I'm gonna deform it again. Okay, so coiling's a little bit better. Twist it, twist it. I do highly recommend getting yourself a ring mandrel. Okay, I'm gonna to have to be happy with that because the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pliers carefully and twist like that. You could use your fingers too for that. Okay, so what I could do because it's got a flat edge here, I could make it have a flat edge here too. So that they're the same. And then it looks like, well, that was just meant to be that way, right? So that's what you gotta do when you find, mis when you do a um, little bit, little mistakes, you just make them work. Okay, so that's done. So the next thing to do is put on your um, bead drops. So I'm going to show you how to do one. And um, I, on the outsides, I have a six by four and an eight by six millimeter rondelle crystal. And I'm going to have um, multiple layers of this, so, um, but I'm just going to show you one and then I'll show you the finished product of all the little, little beads that I have. Okay, so you're going to take a piece of scrap 20 gauge or working 20 gauge or a head pin. So that's up to you how you do it. So I'm just going to make a simple head pin there by adding a tiny little bend at the end and crimping it. So it's like that. That's all I'm doing. Any kind of head pin will work. Okay, and I'm just gonna put the big rondelle on first and the smaller one. Now you could do just a loop here at this point, but because for earrings that works just fine, but for a necklace, I like, excuse me, I like a wrapped, a wrapped um, loop because it's got the strength. So you, you do your favorite length that you like that gets the amount of wraps you want. And then you need to make a ring it's a little bit bigger than you normally do for an earring because it's got to be big enough to go around the coiled wire okay so at this point you have to have it a little bit spread out there and you got to stop at this point because you got to put it on the ring before you finish your loop so it's there and then you just squeeze this 
so that's closed now I see it's a little bent I'm going to straighten that okay and then you wrap as neat as you can slipped on me okay and then snip it and crimp it in I'm peeking over the camera couldn't get my aim right crimp it in straighten your coil straighten your your loop because it usually gets bent. Okay, what I mean by bent is see it's sitting lopsided there. That's the back. We want to see what the front looks like. Okay, and just straighten it up. And there it is. There's the first one. So now I want you to, whatever you choose to put on there, I want you to go ahead and put on your bead drops. I'll go and put mine on. Okay, I'm back and I have all of my beads that I picked on. So it's like this. I've got a giant rectangle. And then I have um, six by four millimeter bicones not bicone, sorry, rondelles, and some 8x6 uh, rondelles as well. I w won't be putting my beads in the description because I want to do, want you to put your own treasures. Um, eventually, this will be part of, I will um, have it as my um, craft-along group, and you might be lucky enough that I send you a bead, these uh, exact beads to make yours, but... Uh, well, we will see. And uh, so, anyways, the next step is to take either um, your uh, Infinity Links, which I'm using, or um, just, um, oh man, what, what are they called? Just, just the loops, the wired loops. You can make your own, you can buy them. Um, I personally am I like using infinity links because I find chain and stuff doesn't uh, come out of them as easily. So um, I'm not putting a chain on this one today. I'm just going to put these links on so it's ready for a chain because then my customer can choose the length of chain they wish to have. Okay, that one's on. So this would be great with a bunch of different gemstones on, like for those that do the chakra, chakra necklaces, It'd be great for that. It's also great for a family necklace where you put all the birthstones on um, multiple multiple uses there okay so it is ready to put the chains on and that's what it's looked like um, now you might notice that this turns when a person wears it it's going to rest against them so it, it will naturally just flatten out and there it's done it's beautiful and I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, I would love to see you on my patreon channel with my craft along groups and uh, God bless and I will see you in the next video bye for now